yoga in diabetes prevention and management. <coughs> Hello, Namaste. Namaste. <clears throat> I see all of you yoga. A lot of yoga teachers around. Shall we start with one Om? We are all going to chant one long Om. <coughs> Let me see whose voice will be the last one to be heard. Take a deep breath. Start now. Om. to give me some more height. change by the fear that the medical science wants to give us. I'm going to skip Manoni of these slides, which has already been spoken to by Dr. Randa Kumar, saying that <clears throat> diabetes is a dangerous condition and it is an imbalance between the hormones which maintain the blood glucose level in the body. And all of us are very familiar with the definition of yoga which is balance. So you can start seeing the imbalance already settling down at the body level between the two hormones. The hormone which increases the blood glucose, the glucagon, and the hormone which reduces the hormone, reduces the glucose, insulin, and they have the, the one which increases the glucose has a great friend, not a great friend, three great friends adrenaline, noradrenaline, and cortisone, which go on increasing their blood level of glucose, and therefore, an imbalance is diabetes. So what are you going to do through yoga? Bring about a balance. Balance even at the physical level is what we have to achieve, and the role of insulin is to see that we allow the glucose to enter into the cell wall and as Dr. Nandakumar was showing you, the fat on the abdomen, the fat cell lining is the culprit. It does not allow the insulin to do its job and that is what is the problem. And <clears throat> therefore, although it is a hereditary tendency, we have to work on the factor of trying to maintain our lifestyle and therefore, that is the whole of the crux of what we are going to be doing to help prevent normal people from becoming pre-diabetics, pre-diabetics from becoming diabetics is the whole of the story of what you all can do by working on the lifestyle. The four things in the lifestyle, healthy diet, regular physical activity, 
abstinence from smoking and alcohol and most important bad habit that most of us have got into are the wrong sleeping habits. In Sanskrit they call it as nishatharatvam. In fact, we used to have a children's camp in Prashanti Kutiram, our campus, where children were enjoying the program like anything and they were leaving on the 10th day of their camp and they had a suggestion to give, please can you stop doing midnight yoga. I said, how, oh, why midnight yoga? We normally sleep at 2 a.m. and wake up at 10 a.m. and you start making us do yoga at 6 a.m., which is midnight for us. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the culprit. Please sleep early, wake up early. It's a beautiful story that we have always heard from our grandparents. And that's what medical science wants you to do it now. Stress, another major culprit. Now, we have known all these for 50 years. Medical science research for 50 years. We know all the pathway, how stress works on the mind, how it works on the nervous system, what chemicals are released, how it increases the blood glucose, how it increases obesity, how the fighting that is going on the cell wall is the cause for insulin resistance. All these we have known, publicized, propagated, World Health Organization has given many, many <coughs> mandates, but why is the disease still increasing? or because of the mind. So mind is the culprit. So what do we, so mind is the root cause, disease is sitting on the branch. Therefore, we should move on to understand what we are doing in the mind. We all, as yoga students, after you start teaching them yoga practices, you just ask them to make a diary of what are all the difficult situations they must be going through in their life to which the mind is responding. So it's the response that is very important. I'll give you an example. We have one person who lives in <coughs> Rajasthan who was on 100 units of insulin every day, 30 units in the morning, 30 in the afternoon and 30 at night, plus another 10 units of lantus at night. And now it is fifth year running has completely stopped his insulin. We have many such examples. I'm just giving his example because he says that this slide has made him stop his insulin. I said, what? One knowledge, one understanding, one concept can make you stop insulin usage? Please explain yourself. He tells me, madam, my, I'm a very highly educated person. I read everything about it. I am following everything. And as you rightly told, diet, I'm very, very strict on that. I'm aging, so I don't have no question of non-vegetarianism. And I do <clears throat> a lot of physical activity. I even do Surya Namaskaras, the sun salutation, absolutely no drinking and smoking. But I have a lot of stress because I have an international business and a lot of stress. And he went on giving me a big list of all the office problems he may have to face because long hours, one hotel in New York, one hotel in London, one hotel in India. So I had to be all the time on my <coughs> phone to answer my problems. And I'm a CEO of the company, so a big responsibility and mega problems come to me. So I knew that it is my stress which was causing all my problem. So I know the list of problems which I have to face. But just this understanding that the problem is not the situation, but it is my response, the way I react to the situation that is causing the problem. And the techniques that I learned in all these things where I react, <coughs> react, 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 activate my nervous system, activate my uh, sympathetic nervous system, the cortisol, the adrenaline, etc., etc., which is keeping my sugar up. And I did not know how to come back to normalcy. And that is the definition that I understood. In all these responses, there is one single common factor 
that is our emotions anxiety fear tension worry depression agitation stress which we have to go on changing which works on the system and produces a problem so they, until now medical science has clearly understood but what we do not know in medical science is what do i do with my mind how do i handle my mind how do i not react to situations because situation is so demanding i have to be on my toes and i cannot ask a young 40 year old person or 50 year old person to stop working changing the situation is not the solution this is where we have to go down to our masters just know this one single definition which is going to be a life saving solution to all of us please make a note of these three words uncontrolled spinning speed at a rewinding of sentences in the mind is the definition of the emotions every emotion whether it is tension anxiety fear worry depression in all these i want all of you to do this experiment tomorrow when you are tense hey is vasishtha right uncontrolled spinning speed rewinding kyoga 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 what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen will i be able to achieve my targets or not what's going to happen to my child what's going to happen to my office problem will i lose my job uncontrolled speed at up rewinding control speed we want to perform at the best of our efficiency but uncontrolled speed is the problem and that is the one when persistent and long standing can lead to many of these problems and therefore <coughs> that is the one which works on the entire system <coughs> and that is the whole of the solution the key is in me my mind in my emotions where i recognize that speed and therefore reduce the speed and that is what is yoga slowing down the rate of flow of sentences in the mind with awareness is the solution so that's the definition sage or sishta gives this definition and therefore all of you as yoga teachers are very familiar with this instant relaxation how many times i can have to do this one minute practice any number of times sitting in the car walking on the street or sitting in our office chair particularly the people who are desktop workers i have to sit in front of my <coughs> screen for 18 hours a day 12 hours a day or 8 hours a day just one minute take a deep breath tighten 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 the whole body relax one minute every hour switch off your mind switch on your mind work with maximum efficiency switch off switch on switch off switch on switch off quick relaxation technique if we retrain ourselves into this training of switching off the speed of the mind by the process of slowing down we would have had all the problem and therefore that is the whole of the solution can we believe this your blood sugar all the complications of the heart all the complications on the kidney i problem can all be stopped if you just understand this apply this but this is what this gentleman did he says now i am driving in delhi i get a big phone call from my new york business and it says big problem big problem and it was such a big problem i hear the problem immediately i observe my response in my mind my god what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen will it collapse my business in the new year immediately i tell myself my dear monkey mind no speed what's going to happen what's going to happen what's going to happen this speed i have to switch off and come to a base level of silence and from that silence let me act and when i get this phone call from delhi what i do is i tell them i may cannot of all the problems i tell them i'll answer you back after 5 minutes and in that 5 minutes i take 3 minutes to reduce the speed of my mind how do i do it 
first director makes, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? I had to pull my mind from that speeded up monkey which is pulling me into that anxiety. So what I do is, monkey out, monkey out, monkey out, monkey out, 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 out. Says, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? Come, come, come back, come back, come back, come back, slow down, slow down, slow down. This is the purpose of Kapala Bhati. What is the meaning of Kapala Bhati? Cleaning the mind of what? Your tension. Cleaning the mind of what? Anger. Cleaning the mind of what? Depression. Cleaning the mind of what? Our negative, unwanted emotions. So I pull my mind. Then mind slows down. Kevala Kumbhaka. Wait for half a minute. Mind has slowed down. I check my mind. What is going to happen? Mind which was saying, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Now we can, what is going to happen? Then I continue. One more minute. Not Ishuti Pranayama or Anurama Vilama. One more minute. Five rounds. Then I watch my mind. Watch my breath. Then I say, Om. Like our friends, Om. Then what happened? What is going to happen? <laughs> and then what is going to happen? What is going to between those two words there is a silent gap. I hang on to that and in that silence I say, Oh God, I let go. I leave it to you. I used to think of God even earlier when I used to have a lot of unsolvable problems. But this silent mind now helps me to really surrender and the answer comes from deep within. Earlier also I used to get very good results because I am very well trained, that's why I am growing in my job and I am very capable. But I used to do all that with intense suppressed emotion. Suppressed speed, drained out speed, so at the end of it I would be collapsing. But now I am so pleasant. Yoga staha guru karmani. And established in my restless state, work goes on. Oh God, you are doing everything through me as an instrument. What are all the yogas he has used now? He has used Raja Yoga, Kaparabhati Kriya, then Nadi Shuti Pranayama. Then Brahmari Pranayama, then Om Meditation, <coughs> all Nana Yoga, and then surrender to the Divine Bhakti Yoga to do what? Karma Yoga. Work in relaxation. So this is what is Yoga. Yoga is to be aware continuously and give that complete rest to reach the state of total mastery. And it sounds like such a simple thing but we need to have regular, regular, regular practice. And that regular practice of all these are important. Healthy diet, regular kriyas, regular asana, pranayama, meditation, relaxation techniques, devotion, and analyzing our own mind. Why am I rushing and speeding? What is my state when I am totally relaxed? This gentleman recognizes that, wow, now problem is solved. I got a phone call from, <coughs> from New York that whatever solution I gave was very useful. Problem is solved. My God, what a happy thing in that moment. What is my mental state? It's not the problem, it's not the solution, it is my inner silence for which I'm doing all this is the analysis that we should adhere to under all circumstances. And that's the whole of the story. And I, I welcome all of you to join hands in this diabetes movement. We have been talking to the Singapore authorities to make this movement a big thing, to make Singapore free from diabetes. Stop diabetes movement, which we carried out in India after we had published 15 papers to show the benefits of yoga 
we went on to take up a nationwide program in which we were able to teach them yoga to 50,000 people selected from amongst 2.5 lakh people or 240,000 people in the whole country in randomized rural and urban populations from 29 states selected from 20, 61 districts which we have just completed and worked on that and we have been publishing those data where we have shown that the prevalence has actually gone up in India from what it was published in 2015. Now the prevalence has gone up to and by even 2 to 3 percent. In spite of all the knowledge, in spite of all the things, the prevalence is going up and therefore we all should join hands to work together to work on all these areas and help our participants. And that was the diabetes module which was prepared for this Niyantrita Madhumeya Bharata Abhiyan or Stop Diabetes Movement which was carried out last year, which you are all learning and practice. And the whole of the message is yoga is not just an exercise. Yoga is mind management. By doing all these practices, we are going to see that we will be able to <coughs> reduce the graph of rising prevalence in Singapore so through yoga. Let us all join hands together as yoga proponents from different parts of Singapore. I know there are large number of yoga schools in Japan, in uh, Singapore, who uh, we all shall join hands together as one consortium of yoga for diabetes group who will be able to promote this and work on that and see that we live as healthy and happy family, which is the message of International Day of Yoga, which we are all working together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagaratna. I would like you to stay on stage for a while. And I would like to invite Mr. Charlie to come on stage and uh, present a bouquet of flower to Dr. Nagaratna, who is dearly called as Didi. Also, I would like to call upon stage Dr. Matthew Tan and to felicitate him, Ajay Kendi Dons. 